Cam, the uh, NCAA Football Rules Committee is meeting this week, and uh, I haven't really researched it, but the one, the the two aspects of the game that they seem to be looking at, which the, the two rules that pertain to the same initiative, basically, is reducing the number of plays to be played in a game and moving the the time stoppage plays like resetting after a first down for example moving those considering moving those to the nfl model which takes time off the clock and obviously reduces the number of plays with what they state to be concern for the player and the amount of plays that they're racking up during a game do you have any thoughts about the college versus the nfl rules and what you would like to see i just want to see them take out the fake injury bullshit yeah you know and are there times that guys get hurt? Are there times that guys get cramps? And hell, I mean, like, you got dudes with massive calf muscles, and you see the two, you know, uh, defined. You can see, like, he's, I mean, that is a cramp. You can tell. I mean, it looks rock hard on the screen. You can see, uh, you know, it's, it's very apparent that that calf muscle is cramping. Okay. But what about all the other times where, the offense is gashing through the defense and they're lined up and you hear a cold whistle and yell. Oh! And then they just lay down on the ground. You know, reference please the infamous Miami loss to FIU. And that was clearly coached and coordinated. And it's been in other games. Not just Miami. We've seen it all across this la- uh, landscape of college football. That is a scourge that needs to go. The other, does it stop or anything? Like, does the clock stop on a first down and things like that? I would like to see it stay the way that it is to differentiate between college and pro. Um, I think that there is there is value in college football being unique from professional football in some ways such as this but one month can't go stop no show and if they change it then they change it and everybody will have to adapt but i would say the fake injury thing would be higher on my list of items to address than you know some play stoppages and i mean what what would be the real change in number you know and would that in the number of plays being run and would that really have that big of an impact on the players at large? So like if there's one big dude, who's not in the greatest of shape, if he's playing 60 snaps a game other than 90 snaps a game, well, okay. That makes a difference. But if he's that big and he's not in that kind of shape, he's probably not going to play 90 snaps anyway. Right. So in a singular engagement, it makes sense, but is that good for every, or does it matter to everybody? You know what I mean? That's where I would kind of push back. And again, I would like to see there still be some clear di- differentiation between college and pro. And th- they're going to be different in a way because the guys at the pro level are much more skilled on the, in, like on the holistic level, you know, just from even the guys at the bottom of the roster, you know, would be all conference in pretty much every conference in college, you know, I, yeah, but Again, the fake injuries, I would say, is more of a, a thing to address than the timing for me. And the one suggestion that stays with me about the fake injuries that seems to be pretty logical, and, and and it's just one of those things that because this has become such an issue, it's too bad when you would target a situation in which somebody was legitimately hurt, but that's just kind of the way it is, is that you would remove that player for the rest of the series. Yeah. Or at least, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, at least a couple of plays or the entire series, you know. And, or you can say the average length, average remaining length of a series. So if they go down on the fourth play and I'll give you do the data analysis and say, okay, well, most series last 10.6 plays, right? So then, cool, you went down after the fourth play. So then seven plays you sit out, whatever would be the end of that. And if they still have the ball, okay, then you can come back on. So whatever a normal series completion would be from this point. I like that better. 
You know what I'm, I mean? But it's it's a tweak yep. on what you are. You know, so it's very similar kind of a thing. So either way, you know, it can work. And if you go down after that play and then they score a touchdown on the next one, well, that's the end of the, you know, then you have the variance to say, okay, just like in Mark's model, that's the end of the drive. So we're not going to keep you out another six plays to be what would be a normal drive. Well, they scored on the next play after you went out, which probably won't happen anyway because you went down with a thick injury to regroup and relax and, you know, may, you know, get everybody in the mindset or an ability to keep them from scoring. But okay. I'm into fairness and equity, and that's the reason why I like your revision to that penalty because, yes, the, the, the drive could last another 15 plays. It could last one more play, and I don't think that that player should be penalized differently because of the duration of the drive. Similarly, targeting. Okay, I'm not going to address the actual – evaluation of the officials and the replay officials mm -hmm. of the actual penalty, but the enforcement of the penalty the this is the only penalty in sports that I can think of that it depends on at what point in the game that you commit the foul as to the severity of what the foul is and the punishment that makes no sense to me. Make it a certain number of plays, a certain number of yeah. series, something. And, I mean, and while we're at it, can we get a yellow card, red card thing? You know? Yeah, and, that too. I mean, because sometimes, yeah, they're egregious. But other times you got big dudes moving really fast and then you slow it down to the infinitesimal, you know, 10,000 frames per second. And you're looking at every one of those 10,000 frames to be like, like, you're, I mean, again, it's not Bugs Bunny. There's no air brakes, you know? And I'm not saying to take away, if you don't want to take it away, fine yellow card for it happened but it was clearly not the intent like i'm already aiming towards the midsection and then he turtles so then our helmets touch but we see okay this was not the intent cool or all right it's a hospital ball and just like you know someone of a uh era gone by shout out to chuck cecil who made a career for head hunting and he comes across the middle and, you know, head hunts in that kind of a way, see ya, automatic. And, I mean, look, in the world of soccer, they give the yellow card, red card. You get the, hey, 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 you know, like, caution versus, no, that was egregious. Get out. They're going to be something like that, you know? Like, and you could and you could do it the same thing, same way as they do it in soccer. If you accumulate, you know, a couple of yellow cards and that makes a red, so then the next game, you know, like, you can, there's an easy way, but just to be like, yeah, if, if you know heads touch or anything and shoulders are closely related to heads guys like it's not far on any human being so even if i go in with my shoulder and then like the other person you know has merton hanks like a big head and a long neck and all of a sudden his helmet touches the side of my helmet then all of a sudden i'm going out because i live with the shoulder but our heads touch because oh well da, da, da. like it's not a long distance guys like i don't understand like people don't use their eyes and like understand anatomy like your shoulders and head are closely related they're very close and you can go with the shoulder and have your head involved in the ball. Your head's not going to be involved. I'm not going to take my head off and go put it over there, bro. Like it's not far from your shoulders. Like it's not, ah, it just, ah, hate it. Yeah. I think we're on the same page here that if all of that can be determined by watching replay frame by frame, by frame, by frame, it can certainly be determined. Did that, violator did he start to make a move at a point in which you could see intent or did the continued movement of the other player cause him to then target that individual not because of the intent but because of the the bodies are moving so fast and so quickly that there was a duck by the the other player um mid-action that they caused it mm-hmm yeah, it's a, it's a bit ridiculous. It's made it almost impossible for these guys to play defense. And the yeah. other thing that I, I'm seeing both in the NFL and, and at the college level is where in the old days, well, in the old days, they used to just rip guys' heads off. But I'm saying in the more moderate old days of in the last 20 to 25 years, I thought it was pretty reasonable that those defenders in a, on a pass rush situation were given a step and a half, uh, meaning right. that – that was reasonable that if you are running full throttle 
and the quarterback delivers the ball and you are in the process of hitting them, then they can't be expected that you can stop. And you actually can see players hesitant to go full throttle. And if defensive players at the high level of college football and in the NFL are not playing at full speed, their maximum, then they're not doing their best to play and defense. That's way, and that's the way that they get injured. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a different kind of a thing. So, yeah, we want it to be hopefully equitable, but also right. <laughs>